Welcome to The Goblet Wire, a surreal microfiction podcast. Transcripts are available on our website, thegobletwire.card.co. The following includes depictions of death in a role playing environment. Take care of yourself and listen responsibly. This is Episode 8 The Insatiable Cataclysm of Absence, written by Justin Hellstrom. Can you tell me the emotions of this session? Mental topography. The flood. The flood. The flood. (laughs) Good thing I made the kids sleep in the treehouse. Moon phase new. You wake. Lean out the treehouse. See that the mountain is blacker than the sky and there are no stars. Are you afraid? Always. As always, the fear is justified. But your feint was successful. Your parents fooled by the mannequin in your bed. Candlelight from your bedroom illuminates the window. You see them fast asleep and loveless. They will drown within the next five minutes. I I just want to run away, not kill them. It is both not your actions and your actions which will drown them. I don't see how. Well, I guess I wait to watch them drown and choose a toy from my pocket. Can the Daimtrajon swim? Not well. Then I'll take the right whale out and set it on the windowsill. The road to the next village winds along the base of the mountains. Lantern posts dot its path with orange glow, and you watch as they wink out one by one. A snake's eyes retreating toward its tail. I want to see how much water is coming, if I'm safe in this treehouse. At the town gates, you see trees take flight, roots plucked, seamless from the ground. They go airborne and tumble, splintering the watchtowers, great rectangles of cargo breaching the redwood and cedar defenses as if pushed by the hands of a monstrous, invisible baby. I don't see any water. Could you be more detailed? You see your parents levitate off the bed, choking on an unseen current which forces them out the window, dragging them along the lawn, legs raised to the black of night until they hit your tree and are flushed from sight. The phenomenon is strong. You may not be able to stop from falling out the window. Three and four. Three for staying in the treehouse, four for my taxonomical summoning. I wish the whale to be just big enough to not break the treehouse. The clear water flow is preternatural, beguiling. Your hands waver in their symbol work. Your incantation is stuttered. The wooden whale bulges with flesh and flipper and fluke and erupts from the treehouse, rending it in two with you sat on the brow. I don't... I don't have a home anymore. You never did. Did you? How does my projection feel? Your projection feels the same as you. But I don't know how I feel. I want you to tell me. Heads. Do it. Doing so may kill you. Shall we proceed? Me or my projection? (sighs) I'm ready. Atop your whale, the city sleeps under the sightless surf. Weather vanes cast away on unseen breeze, and glass drifts as a magnetic star field. A million luminescent cuts lie in wait, but you are separate from it, from the baker pinned to the ribs of a carriage, the archer twins somersaulting as dandelion seeds before being sucked into the well, fairies headed for the center of the world, but you are separate from it. You are separate from the world, from the magic of a whale beneath your hands, smooth stainless. More specific, please. I want to feel it all. Eternal dissonance has befallen you. 
Every feeling there could ever be, if felt all at once, feels as if nothing, nothing at all. The insatiable cataclysm of absence. It is this you feel most. And this emotion has joined its kin from others just like you in the world, and they shall rampage immature and feckless on this night. Where is this phenomenon taking us? You no longer know. In the throes of your contemplations, the whale was impaled on the bell tower. You were churned, alone and numb, surrounded by a cosmic plane of glass that takes the blood from inside you, spiraled, galaxy-armed. The cuts in weight have found a home. Wait. Your, Your life, life leaks away in tendrils, pale wisps, the curse of handwriting of all of the words that you were too weak to write. Stop. And in their confluence, their runes, you see the shape of something vast and beautiful just on the verge of being born. Something that can only become alive, can only become happy without your presence among the living, without your blood pumping, without you being able to feel. There it is. Call sign blue flame eliminated. <sighs> no, no way. Password revoked. Could, would you? Campaign termination protocol complete. Roll for your final words. Two. So warm. This episode was written by Justin Hellstrom. It starred Oliver Morris as Blue Frame and Richard Penner as The Dictator. Art by Chandler Candela. Credit music by Oliver Morris. Editing and sound design by Esther Ellis and Justin Hellstrom. Synthscape by Justin Hellstrom. We've partnered with the Apollo Podcast app to create a custom carousel for the Goblet Wire. Go to the creators of the Goblet Wire section on the front page of their app to quickly subscribe to and download all of the shows our writers have made. There are just over 200 of you who download every episode. We're still working hard to grow this show and I'd love your help. If you like this show, I'd be most grateful if you recommended it to a friend, a stranger, on a Reddit thread, a Twitter response, post a sticky note in your laundromat, ask the next telemarketer if they'll consider subscribing, Put the dictator in your own role-playing game and send your players here when they want more answers. More than iTunes reviews or monetary support, sharing the show does the most to get us to that next level. And with that next level comes more Goblet Wire. We've got four episodes left in this batch. You won't want to miss them. Next week is episode 9, The Faded Starling, by Eli Barraza. I hope we'll see you there. <laughs>